there's this trending platform out there that everyone seems to be talking about, Webflow. And of course, there's this other platform that everyone has been talking about since like the early 2000s, WordPress. So which one is right for you and when should you pick one over the other? I've actually used both of them and I'm here to break them down for you. So let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes, and yes, you may be thinking, all right, Tony, you work at Thrive Themes, you guys built the best conversion-focused plugins for WordPress, aren't you going to be a little bit biased to be able to do a comparison? Well, I am going to try to be as objective as I possibly can in this video, I'm going to be talking about the good and the bad of both Webflow and WordPress, and give you guys my completely honest opinion. I've broken down the video into the following chapters so that you can quickly navigate to whichever one you're most concerned about design and customization, e-commerce and content capabilities, SEO, security, and pricing. All right, let's dive in. Great, let's start talking about designing and customizing your website. I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys here. It is really hard for me to pick a winner because they're both great solutions for different target audiences. Here's the thing, Webflow is the closest thing to writing pure native CSS without actually programming. When you're structuring your websites with Webflow, you're going to be naming your divs, your content sections, and your button styles as legit CSS classes, which is something that WordPress users, you know, they just would never do that. You know, what Webflow, it is the closest thing that I've come across to pure no-code CSS. And since you're writing CSS with a drag and drop interface, you can literally design any kind of website that you can possibly imagine. You can, you know, you can get super fancy with animations and transitions and build agency type websites that will really blow your visitors minds but that does come at a cost which is the massive learning curve navigating webflow is just not easy webflow does have some awesome educational content that will try to help you get started but it's only going to take you so far if you want to build apple.com or you know tesla.com you're in for a challenging ride this is why I like to recommend Webflow, especially to marketing agencies and to pre-existing programmers who are trying to transition into a faster way of building and developing websites. But it's just not a tool that I would recommend to Uncle Joe who is trying to set up a course and sell it online. WordPress, on the other hand, also has a little bit of a learning curve, right? I mean, you do need to learn about hosting. You have to look for a page builder that you're comfortable with and you, you have to learn how to use it. But the learning curve is just not nearly as steep as that of Webflows. In fact, most companies like, you know, like Thrive Themes understand that most WordPress users are trying to do mainly two things, which are make money and make it fast, which is why we always build our tools with those two key parameters in mind. And hence why all of our tools here at Thrive Themes are completely conversion focused. Now, that's not to say that just because you want an easy way of getting your business up and running, you can't have a slick looking website on WordPress. I myself have been able to replicate websites as big as the New York Times, Apple, Abercrombie and Fitch, I mean, just to name a few using Thrive Architect. It's just that you will oftentimes find some limitations as to how fancy can you take certain aspects of your website without writing code. For example, you're not going to be able to create 3D animations in WordPress, at least, you know, not yet, without writing code, whereas you know, Webflow, once you learn how to, you know, how 3D animations work using their interface, well, you know how they work and you can now implement them on your website. So to recap in terms of design, you know, there are both great options. I would say that if you are an agency owner or you're looking to start a web design and development agency, it may be worth putting in the extra time of learning how to use Webflow as it's going to really help you build a portfolio that really wows and impresses your potential customers. And if you're a business owner, content creator, coach, or, you know, then WordPress is probably a more suitable option for you, especially if you pair it with something like Thrive Suite, since you'll be able to launch your website fast and I'm talking like half an hour and concentrate on converting visitors into paying customers. Jumping on to e-commerce and content capabilities. Let me be frank here with you. WordPress wins. I mean, just to give you a little bit of background context. WordPress is actually a content management system. It was built to handle thousands of thousands of content pieces in its database. So regardless of whether you're looking to build walmart.com and have a catalog of 10,000 products in your inventory, or if you're building the New York Times and you need to be adding 50 new blog posts to your website each day, you're going to be in good hands with WordPress. The blogging side of things will be natively supported by WordPress itself. And there are like a gazillion different e-commerce solutions for WordPress. WooCommerce probably being the most popular for selling physical products, 
and EC digital downloads, most popular one for digital products. Webflow, on the other hand, doesn't give you a content management system on their most basic plan, meaning that you can technically speaking, launch and put out a website using Webflow that doesn't support e-commerce functionality nor blocking capabilities because, well, you just simply don't have a place to store all of those products and articles on the back end of your website. But if you do upgrade to like a higher Webflow plan, then you'll be able to incorporate e-commerce and blogging without any issues. And there is one thing that I do like about Webflow though, which is that both its content management system and e-commerce solutions are obviously native, which means that they work really well, really smoothly, and you don't have to worry about any incompatibility issues. Now, SEO is a crucial aspect of any website as it determines how easily your site can be found by search engines like Google. I have conflicted feelings about which platform has the lead here. On one side, Webflow does have all of its SEO features built in and it lets you create custom meta titles and descriptions for your pages. It lets you do some basic things like set up, you know, alt text for your images. And it can also do 301 redirects for your pages that have you been either moved or, or that, you know, they no longer exist. Again, all this is built in and completely out of the box, which is really cool. With WordPress, on the other hand, you do need to find an SEO plugin like, you know, all-in-one SEO, which not only will match the features that Webflow has to offer, but most SEO plugins for WordPress will also take them up a notch. And, you know, all-in-one SEO, for example, already integrates with ChatGPT, so it can write your meta descriptions and titles for you. It will even generate your own sitemap and make it easy for Google to crawl your website. So, you know, just overall, it feels like you have more control over SEO parameters on WordPress than Webflow. Now, when it comes to ranking your website on Google, many businesses have been able to achieve high rankings on, you know, on either platform. So it's going to ultimately come down to your own preferences and needs. On both platforms, you need to follow essentially the same SEO standards of, you know, using relevant keywords in your title, creating high quality content and be up, you know, regularly updating your, your website with fresh content. Before we move on to security though, I will say this. I've always heard from insiders that Google has a thing for WordPress websites. And I mean, think about it. Google knows the ins and outs of how WordPress works. WordPress has been around for so long that it's it's very easy for Google to crawl websites built on WordPress as long as they've been properly set up and there's nothing crazy going on. So I'll just say that. All right, let's move on to security. I'm going to speak from the point of view of a solopreneur or a small business looking to not have to deal with any types of security issues. Webflow just has the upper hand. I mean, mainly because you don't have to worry about your website being hacked at all. So long as you're using a strong password and have enabled to factor authorization, you're essentially good to go. WordPress users, for the most part, shouldn't have any major headaches either, but there are some more website safety measures that you, and precautions that you need to take into account. For example, you need to make sure that you're hosting your site with a reliable company. You do need to find a good security plugin like WordPress or Security. And you do need to make sure that you're not over installing too much stuff on your website that could potentially open up the door to vulnerabilities, which is something that I see a lot of people doing. You know, you, I've logged in and WordPress websites that just have like 200 plugins installed and half of them haven't been updated in years. So yeah, just be careful with that. Now let's talk about money. Let me give it to you straight. Webflow has a more, you know, here's how much you need to pay policy and that's about it approach. Whereas with WordPress, depending on what you're looking to do, you may have to purchase one, two, three, sometimes even more plugins, which makes it a little bit harder to plan in advance how much money you're looking to really spend. Overall, I feel like Webflow is actually pretty affordable. I mean, you've got plans that range from 18 bucks a month to 50 bucks a month. And like I said, if you're an agency owner that wants a way of writing CSS without actually programming, you know, Webflow could be a really cool option for you. Circling back to WordPress, WordPress is actually free, but not really. Here's the thing. WordPress in it of itself is open source. Anyone can use it for free, but you do need to host your WordPress website somewhere so that people can visit it online. This means that even though WordPress itself is free, you know, there are some things that you're simply going to have to pay for. You know, hosting is just one of them, but you'll probably also want a page builder to build your pages, or you may also want a theme builder to build out your WordPress theme. And you will also most likely want something like Thrive Leads or Optim, you know, Optim Monster to capture emails. You know, a lot of these are paid solutions. Or you can also sign up for something like Thrive Suite, which bundles pretty much everything you possibly want 
to build a conversion focused website for a very affordable price. It's honestly a little bit hard to pick a winner. I mean, I feel like with Webflow, there's less room for surprise expenses, but with WordPress, you also have more flexibility to pay for things that you know you'll need and not have to incur a cost on things that you know you won't be needing. One last thing before I let you go. There is one big reason why I would still pick WordPress over not just Webflow, but most other web building solutions out there. Here's the thing. WordPress being open source and not being a private company means that whatever you build on WordPress, it is yours. And if for whatever reason WordPress were to stop receiving updates, your website would still exist and function as long as you have a reliable hosting provider. With Webflow, yes, your website is yours since, you know, Webflow operates as a software as a service provider. But if Webflow were to go bankrupt or, you know, if something weird were to happen with Webflow, your work is gone. It wouldn't be as easy to take your work and move it to a different platform. Now, don't worry, you know, Webflow's numbers, you know, I don't think they're concerning, but you know, I still thought out meant it would be worth mentioning this. And that's it for this video. While you're here, be sure to check out this other video on our channel. And remember, if you like online marketing and web design and development, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well.